Did you know purple songs can fly? Welcome to our program, produced by the Children in Treatment at the Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Centers. Our program is about great music made by some terrific young talents. Now, here are the hosts of Purple Songs Can Fly. Hello, and welcome to the program, Purple Songs Can Fly, on the Voice America Kids Network. My name is Emily Freeman. And I'm Dominic Tabala. And today, we'll be interviewing Christian Spear who is diagnosed and treated here at Texas Children's and is now a long-term cancer survivor. So welcome. Hey, how are you guys? Doing great. We're doing good. It's good to have you here. Yeah, yeah I'm super excited to be on the show. So to get the ball rolling, um, first of all, where were you born and um, wh where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Local girl, okay. Yes, yeah. favorite Texas, right favorite here. place on the planet. Okay, you gotta love my hometown. Awesome, awesome. So, did you travel as a child? I think it's just good to start with a general background. Yeah, um, I for the first, I'd say maybe like a couple of years of my life, maybe two or three, I was kind of raised a little bit in Ohio. That's where my mom was born. Oh, okay, uh, and so I was born in Houston. We went back to Ohio for a bit, and then came here right before I was diagnosed. Okay, a little it. bit of traveling there. So how about your family? Are, are you an only child? Or? No, no. Uh, I have my mom, of course. I have my younger brother, Grant. He's 18. Uh -huh. he's okay. a grown uh -huh. man. <laughs> <laughs> 18 is yeah. the age. I know, right? Yeah. But So yeah, it's just us. Okay. So um, what was your diagnosis? Um, I was diagnosed on my fourth birthday. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with ALL. Okay. Um, leukemia. Okay. That's the same kind that I have, so oh, I, know really? that, I know how that works, yes. Okay, I didn't know I that. Yeah. And uh, what treatment did you go through? Um, four years of chemotherapy and I want to say radiation. I was so young, uh -huh. so I'm, right. I'm honestly not sure. Totally right. understandable. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah there would probably be a bunch of big words and treatments that I wouldn't even know how There's to big words right. that I don't understand. Exactly. So. And was that here at Texas Children's Hospital? It was. Okay. It was. I was under the care of Dr. Zoe and Dreyer. Ah, she's awesome. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dreyer. Yes. Yeah, she's so fun. So as you were young, do you remember your biggest interests or hobbies as a child and a teenager? Oh, man. Um, music, honestly, has always been a huge part of my life. Oh, really? I was, oh, well, I was seven when I started singing. My mom says five, but I say seven because okay. that's when I remember it the most. Okay. Right. Um, and I started writing when I was 12. So singing and songwriting wow. has always been a large part. So what has been, like, your inspiration? Like, do you remember... Was there anything that made you like music? Yep, actually... Yeah. Um, I was seven when uh, my great grandmother passed away, mm -hmm. and um, I sang at her funeral, and mm -hmm. that was one of the first times I think that I had actually gotten up and performed, and mm -hmm. and just I was starting to kind of come into my own, even as you know a right. seven year old, you know yeah. losing you know a family member, right. I I got up and I, and I wasn't crying, mm -hmm. I was, you know I was singing, I was performing, I was sharing that gift. Right. And, you know, giving a song to my grandmother is kind of, you know, a good, or my great-grandmother is like a goodbye yeah. for her. Do you remember what song it was that you sang for you? Oh, it was a gospel song, and I wish I could remember, oh. uh, I wish I could remember the title, but I don't. Okay. That's beautiful. That's okay. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it really, it really, I feel like it shaped, it shaped that passion for me, and wanting to perform and share that gift. Oh. I think, I honestly think that's one of the reasons why that's the easiest way for me to express how I'm feeling. If I'm singing a song, I can tell you how I feel better than just speaking. Speaking. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, um, were there any instruments that you played? Or? I wish. Oh, my gosh. My mom. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. My mom bought me a keyboard when I was 10. Really? 11 years later, and I still don't know how to play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> shameful. <You> sing, <laughs> but, yeah, so I have one instrument. That's my voice. But I want to learn how to play guitar and piano. Desperately. I, I was trying to learn. Yes. Never I, too I have always wanted to learn piano. Yeah. Or do it together. 
We'll yes, do it together. Yes, we we'll have do to that. learn. There we'll we do go. that. <laughs> so, schooling. Were you homeschooled through diagnosis, or where did you go to school? I was um, enrolled at T.H. Rogers. It's a vanguard school for the gifted and talented. Uh -huh. And I missed basically all of kindergarten and a lot of first grade. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, I was able to test out of it, so I wasn't you know held back or anything like right. that. But uh, I missed a good amount of those you know beginning years. Um, other than that, I was I was definitely able to, to go to school and you know through elementary, mm -hmm. middle, and high school. middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, okay, definitely. Well, that's good. That's that's really good. Yeah, I'm thankful. So you never had to go through homeschooling throughout your cancer years? I didn't. You didn't. I didn't. You even in, in even in kindergarten, I don't even um, necessarily remember how I was able to stay okay. up to up to par yeah, with to all the other kids, but I, when I tested out, I guess, Okay, yeah. very good. Well, that's great. That's, that really is. Yeah. Yeah, definitely thankful for that. Awesome. Good. And where are you in schooling now? I'm actually a junior at Louisiana State University. Go Tigers! Awesome! <laughs> awesome! Yeah, and I'm majoring in uh, human resources education and leadership development. Just a mouthful that's, to say. Wow. That's a lot. Human resources. Human resources. Simply <laughs> that's <laughs> really cool. That okay. is really cool. Thanks. Yeah, I, I love it there. It's an awesome university. So what is this human resources exactly? What do you, how do you study that? Yeah. Um, you basically. And what does that like involve? Uh, it involves uh, management classes, leadership mm -hmm. development, how to um, interact with your employees uh -huh. on a professional and even uh, emotional level. You could uh, mm -hmm. learn about emotional intelligence and how it interacts in the workplace. It's really just kind of learning how to be a leader. Okay. That's yeah. really cool. That sounds like a that is really good thing. Cool. It's, it's, a, you know, it's an enjoyable, enjoyable major. It really mm -hmm. is. It's an enjoyable major. And that's important. Yeah. yeah. And that can tie into whatever you want to be when you grow up, really. Yeah. Exactly. It sure right. does. Cool. And my major will definitely help me throughout this year while um, being a fellow for Purple Songs Can Fly. I was offered a fellowship, and so I'm here in Houston awesome. for the whole year. Awesome. And we'll be talking about what the fellowship is in a later segment. Yes. And we're going to end this segment in a few minutes with a song about nurses. So, Kristen, do you have any fond memories about nurses, or are there any in particular that you remember? Of course, it, especially at Texas Children's, where oh, there's yes. just so many kind spirits and really just kind of make you forget about your treatment. There, right. you know, a Nurse Paulette and Susan and Yolanda, I could probably go on. Go on for Go on and on and Definitely. on. Definitely. Yes, I'm with you on that. So the name of this song is The Kind Side of the Nurse, and it was written by Cameron when he was nine I've years old. I've been coming here since August, and the nurses are real nice. They shine like the sun, they make my fears run. Needles don't hurt, they hold me and they hug me. I've been coming here since August, and the nurses are real nice. The nurses here are butterflies, they flit and fly around. The beautiful phenomenon. Previous contestant, so this yes. is going to be an exciting segment. So, first of all, how is how is, how did you um, you know learn about the audition? How did you know about it? 
Who was your connection? Yes. So how did you get it? How did you get it? I was about nine or ten when uh-huh. Idol first aired, and Kelly Clarkson won, and it uh-huh. was just history from there. I swear, the moment I saw it, I was like, I have to do this. Oh. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. So, you know, years and years go by, and you see all these winners. You see Fantasia, you see right. Kelly, you see Ruben Stutter, right. and I turned 16, and I decided, okay. This is, I'm going to do this. It's I'm gonna time. Go. Oh, yeah. It I have time. waited so many years. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, I have to do this. I'm going to win. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. It, it was, I had it in my head that that's what I wanted to do. So I went and mm. I auditioned. And where was the audition? Um, the audition was actually held in Dallas. Uh-huh. Not too far from Houston at all. So right. that was good. Right. Um, you know, they have you in this huge stadium mm. full of, you know, Basically, like anywhere from like thirteen to fifteen thousand people, and oh, wow. and so when you're watching it on TV and you see all of those people, right. that's the very first day. Okay, there are actually okay. three auditions. Little known secrets. Mm. There are three <laughs> auditions that lead up to like the big day with the judges. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So throughout the American Idol adventure, did you travel throughout the U.S. or was it all in Dallas for you? Um, I actually only made it to the last day of Hollywood Week. And so um, it stayed in Dallas, and then when I auditioned with the actual judges, I got my golden ticket, yay, uh, and then I went on to Hollywood, so wow. it was just in those two places. Nice. Made it farther than most, I mean, that's great. That, so that is true. No, it was an there. awesome experience. You were there. Right. Yeah. Incredible. Thanks. So, memories about that, the ups, the downs. You, going in, you must have had a lot of expectations. And right. I, you know, I really did. Because, you know, you watch it from being a kid. Right. Your right. imagination and runs wild. <laughs> exactly. When, most of the time when people ask me about this, I equate it to seeing a magic trick and mm-hmm. then learning how it's done. Right. Okay. And then you just, you know, you kind of learn all the ins and outs, yes. behind the scenes. Yes. and um it was a really good experience. It was stressful. You know, everybody everybody was in it to win it. <laughs> you know? Right. So it would, you know, but you meet a lot of really good people there. I still have friends that I keep in touch with from Idol, you know. Oh, cool. Even, and it's been, what, five, six? Right. Well, however, however long. many years, right? right. <laughs> um, Do you remember anything in particular that surprised you? Something that was different than you thought it would be? Huh. You know what? The group... Uh, when you work together in groups, you know, there's a time in Hollywood, Hollywood week where you mm. um, work together as groups and you perform a song together. It was not as stressful as they made it seem on TV. Really? But yeah. They, they would literally go around and kind of t- try to see if there was something, you know, drama <laughs> filled going right. on. You know, of course, it's for TV. But yes. our, our group worked well together and most of the groups did. Good. Right. So yeah, it wasn't well, as stressful. I, I, I'm sure. I mean, there were stress, stressful moments. Um, how do you, how do you handle with stress? I mean, yeah. what, do you, what do you do personally? <laughs> you, do you know, I in corner. <laughs> and <went> to <laughs> I probably <laughs> should have had a screaming corner <laughs> or something or a punching bag. But you know, I, everything happens so quickly mm. that you don't even have time to be you know nervous like even with my my first audition right I was nervous in the beginning but then when they're like okay you're up you know number whatever right. and they call your name and you go in there what just I, do what, it exactly <laughs> you just you go in there you do it right. and then when it was over I was like oh my gosh I was just in front yeah. of Simon I was just in front of Randy <laughs> I was, you know and right. you just right. Yeah. right from start to finish how long was your American Idol journey how many weeks oh what they it? split it up so okay. it was probably a few months because you go to the audition and then you wait a month and then you mm, go to another right. one you wait a few weeks so it was probably about three or four three or four months maybe okay, okay. Months. I might be under shooting that a little bit but okay roundabout just remember, ballpark yeah. yeah do you remember yeah. what songs you sang there I do my <laughs> my first a few yeah my first audition song was All I Could Do Was Cry by Etta James uh-huh. oldie but goodie I yes. love Etta James yes. she's just amazing um <laughs> Then I remember I sang Last Name by Carrie mm-hmm. Underwood. Right. I'm a big country fan. And actually, <laughs> I sang a snippet of that, and Simon said I was annoying. I swear, they didn't show that on TV, but he said I was annoying. Funniest thing. Really? It was probably, like, one of the best moments of my life. I know. <laughs> Even, it, honestly, it was, like, it was a funny moment to me. Um, and then I remember singing, oh, gosh, 
was the name? Oh, uh, Chasing Pavements by Adele. Chasing Pavements. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I love Adele. Okay. She's just, I want her to come out with another album like yesterday. Right. <laughs> She's amazing. Right. <laughs> Are there any myths that you could dispel for us? Any sure. interesting facts? Something that you'd like to tell us all about the <laughs> uh oh uh oh might be in breach of a, a contract now. It's a big it's a <laughs> show, so. Oh, man. Um, it's... It is all very, uh, <laughs> I feel so bad. It is kind of staged in a sense because, uh-huh. you, you know, you think that what you're seeing on TV with, you know, all these people coming out, they kind of already know your story when you come in. Right. And they, they ask you to, like, if you've ever been through anything in your life, they want to know about it because, they you know, mm. they want to put you on TV. Right. All this different stuff. They, they really want... I guess to to capture like you know the hearts of people mm. and so they kind of they honestly they ask for sob stories right that is the word they used so okay, they did okay. they actually did a story on my cancer really on TV yeah wow I'm gonna have to look that up on TV and try to watch your episode definitely yeah it, it is that. on YouTube it is okay I'll look that up <laughs> well I'll have to do that <laughs> so we're going to end this segment with a song by Joanne when she was 13 years old called Techno Is My Lifeline. Welcome back to Voice America Kids um, and Purple Songs Can Fly. My name is Emily Freeman. And I'm Dominic Dybala. And today we are interviewing Kristen Spear. Hey everybody. Yes, Hello. she is a former cancer survivor. And also an American Idol contestant, which we talked about in the last segment. Yes. In this segment we're going to talk more about her being a long-term survivor and memories that she has about treatment and her diagnosis. Yes. I'm yes. certain there's going to be amazing stories you've got to tell us here. So right. Definitely. Well, first of all, congrats on being a long-term survivor. Thank I you mean, so that is a huge, much. huge accomplishment. Thank I mean, you. I'll actually I'll make 15 years this July. Woohoo! So that's awesome. Very, very that is excited awesome. about it. Thanks. Yes, I just hit my five-year. Um, oh right. Yes. Yes. So that makes me so happy. Yeah. So going back to the first few days about your diagnosis, how did it all start? Do you remember, what's the earliest memory you have about your diagnosis? And we can go from there. So um, I've heard my mom tell this story, Mm. you know, many, many times. Um, 
to people. Um, and I was actually, like I said in a couple seconds ago, I was diagnosed on my fourth birthday. Mm. Um, so this is 1996. And I had a party at Chuck E. Cheese, actually. We had come out to Houston because at that oh. time I was living out in Ohio where my mom is from. Okay. Okay. So I was having a party at Chuck E. Cheese, uh, and my little brother, he was just born, like, mm. not too long before that, in January of 96. Okay. So this is October of, of 96, and I'm having this party, and I have been complaining of chest pains. Mm. So... Um, my mom, you know, she's thinking that it's just, oh, she's jealous of her baby brother. She's not getting the same attention. Yeah. And so she wasn't paying it, you know, much mind. Right. So uh, one night she, for whatever reason, comes into my room to check on me and I'm burning up. You know, mm. I have a fever of like 104. Oh, my. Um, I have little uh, freckles on me that we now know are called petechiae. Mm. It's like broken blood vessels under the skin. Mm. And... Um, she, you know, rushes me to the hospital, and when when the doctors are, you know, checking me out, they're they're saying all of these things that she's not quite understanding, you know, medical terminology. Right, right. And then they sit her down and they say, you know, well, at the time she was Miss Spear, she doesn't know Miss Spear. Um, we think that your daughter has leukemia, and so she mm. doesn't know what this. She's like, okay, I think I've heard of it, but what is it? And they say cancer. Mm. So that. Is how my diagnosis went. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that was a long time ago, so I suppose the first memories that you have would be later on. Yeah. And the early diagnosis right. is just stories that your mother tells you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm. Wow. Wow. And you're diagnosed and treated the whole, throughout the entire journey at Texas Children's Hospital. Thankfully. Okay. Yes. It's a good place to be. Yes. It it's is. the best. They take care it of you there. Really is. Definitely. I feel like they, they do so much for you to, to treat you as a, as a child as a person as a person. And, not, and not just as a patient yes. right you know because you know er, anyone can can be a patient if you're if you're sick and you're at a hospital you're a patient but right. not everyone can can still live their life and still have a childhood right. and exactly. just be a kid right. exactly that's so important yes yes and so tell us about how things have changed coming back now uh, we're in the tch building so what are some differences and changes um, for instance the arts and medicine how has that program changed? Well, I, it's only gotten better. Mm -hmm. and honestly, since I've gone and come back, everything has, has only progressed. And with Purple Songs being here, I wish that I had, you know, had that when, <laughs> right. when I was being treated here. One thing I do remember having, though, was uh, writers in the schools. And I was really that? fond of, of getting to work with people. They would come in and um, they would write with you, whether it was a story or a poem. Right. Um, and I actually wrote, I think I was about eight or nine, mm -hmm. wrote um, a poem about my dad. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's and really cool. That was like one of one of my, you know, more fond memories of, of being treated here and getting to work with writers in the schools. Nice. Yeah. When nice. I when I come to the hospital, almost every time I'll see a performance going on in the waiting room, they'll have quartets come and perform or dancers or mm -hmm. right. someone who recites something. The arts in medicine program is wonderful. It just brings more life to the Texas Children's Hospital. Definitely. It's, it's certainly a, a flourishing program. It's awesome that Purple Songs is a part of it. Yes. So do you have any advice that you'd like to share with comrades and in cancer treatment. Oh, right. What have you learned throughout the journey? And <clears throat> yeah. Something you'd like to share with us. To so kids who are going through similar things that oh. you have been through. Definitely. I'll say hindsight is twenty twenty. Mm. And so, you know, being, you know, the ages four through eight, mm -hmm. you don't you don't really see the things that you see, you know, now, like at my age when I'm you know, I'm twenty one. Right. So looking back I can say that I have just a whole new outlook on life. Oh, yes. And understanding <laughs> that each day truly is a blessing. Yes. And it no day, it, you know, is promised to us. And so it's so important that, you know, you say things that you mean, that you're that you're good to people and mm -hmm. that you that you're good to yourself and that you're just you're you're happy. Right. That's so important. It, when you go through something like this, you you don't think about all the little right, things. Sometimes you don't realize what's going on as it's happening. Exactly, yes. as it's happening. But, you know, you, you grow up and you... And then looking back, exactly, you see it all. It opens you. your eyes and... It really does. Mm -hmm. And it shows you that there, there are so, you know, many things that you could be worried about, but why? You know? Right. 
but why? When, when you're here and you're breathing and you're alive yes. and, and you're surrounded by good people and love and yes. other little things really don't matter as much. So we're going to end this segment with a song written by Kirsten when she was working with the arts and medicine program. Yep. So briefly tell us how you got you got involved with them. Yeah. As a right. So I was 17 and I had just come back from Idol at this point mm -hmm. and I came to perform for kids in the Cancer Center another song that I had written Aww. for them. Um, and I look and I see this gorgeous purple recording studio and mm. you know I have a singing and songwriting background so I'm like what is this yes. like I have to be there <laughs> what you know someone tell me what this is right so uh, Miss Carol Heron she's the director of arts and medicine she um, comes and explains to me this is purple songs can fly you know uh, Miss Anita founded it and mm. you're gonna write songs with the patients and some of their siblings and so I'm like I have to do this so pretty soon after that I met Miss Anita for the first time right uh, and we ended up writing a song about my mom that's really cool you hear yeah. thinking this is right up my alley definitely <laughs> it was and so this song is called if I didn't have you how do I put in words how I feel what could I possibly say to let you know a simple thank you can't even come close if I were able to tell you this is how it would go how it program Purple Songs Can Fly on the Voice America Kids Network. My name is Emily Freeman and I'm Dominic Dabala and today we are interviewing a long-term cancer survivor Christian Spear. Hello, hello. Christian Spear is also an American Idol contestant from a few years back and she's also currently a songwriter working with Purple Songs Can Fly. So Christian, will you tell us something about the Purple Songs Can Fly camaraderie that you're working with right now? why you want to work with it. Obviously it's a great program, but um, 
what do you hope to accomplish? And just tell us a bit about what you're going through right now. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Honestly, in a nutshell, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was such a loaded question, <laughs> a <very> direct question. <laughs> no, um, it's a great question, actually. I am just so thrilled to be working with Purple Songs. It honestly, it's an experience that I feel has just come full circle for me in my life, and I've told everyone this. Anyone who's who's asked and been willing to listen to this right. explanation, um, you know, being treated here mm-hmm. at Texas Children's to grow up around music and to have that become my you know my passion my true first love singing yes. songwriting and then to get to come back here to the very you know to the very place I was treated and to do what I love and to right. work with these beautiful kids these deserving kids yes. you know who are going through such heavy things in their life but yes. still able to maintain such a light spirit right it's, and it's joy really, yeah and the yes. same things that you went through so I can definitely see how it's the circle thing helping the next the next child get through exactly it, yes. sharing and Sharing what you learned and helping exactly. get through it's it. really just a, a matter of, of paying it forward. Mm-hmm. Everything that I was given during my treatment, I just right. I want to give that back tenfold. That's that so important. That is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, it's also a joy to see you know everybody that has kind of watched me grow up in a sense. You know, I, oh, I came sure. here when I was four. I'm, I'm 21 sure. now, so Dr. Dryer, she's just she's such she's an still amazing here. soul. Yeah, Her definitely. Things change, but she's still here. Exactly, and she's still just the amazing doctor that she was when she treated me at four. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely a fashionista. <laughs> she's awesome, and so get to to get to be around her mm-hmm. and all the nurses that, like I said, watched me grow. It's right. it's, a, it's an honor. Working with some of these kids so far, they have talked about really tough topics. You know, yeah. I've worked with a young lady who wrote a song about losing her hair. Mm. I've worked with another young lady who wrote about friends that she's lost here at the cancer center. It's it's just amazing to be able to give them that gift, mm, to right. allow them to express what they're going through and let yes. them know that whatever they're feeling is okay. Yes. And they should be able to express that. Right. Speak their mind. Definitely. So, um, how do you, I mean, how do you take it into your hands when you um, have a child that just has, like, writer's block? It's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I want to write about. I want to write a song, but, or, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but they just, you know. Yeah, I mean, I have I have writers block myself all the time. And right, you just you you make a safe space for them. Mm. You let them know that you know it's not about you have to write a song or you have to know. <laughs> right, or it, you know you don't let them get frustrated. You yeah. just you, you know you ask them questions. So, what is your favorite thing to do? Right. Ooh, oh, I love your purple tennis shoes. Or you know, right. what, just whatever it is, anything to kind of get their creativity sparked. Mm. And if you know what, if they say they love something, or you know they're afraid of something, right. or say something about their mom, you you go with that. Let it flow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, what's on your plate for the future? What What do you have ahead of you? You've got a very exciting childhood with yes. the cancer diagnosis and yeah. the American Idol, but. What's right, I, I got to keep up the excitement, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm starting with just this year with, with Purple Songs. I think this is going to just mm-hmm. be a transformative year for, for me, for yes. Miss Anita, for Purple Songs, just for everyone involved. It's going to be a huge year. And then after that, I will go back to LSU and I will get my degree and then see awesome. what see what life has in store for me. Awesome. Do you have a plan for what career to take yet? Oh, I'm a singer. <laughs> you know, all day. That. That. <laughs> even even with my degree, I definitely I know that I want to sing. That's all I've ever wanted to do in my entire life, and so I will continue to do that. There you go. One That's of these days, I'm going to be walking through Walmart and I'll see a CD. Justin <laughs> Spears' first yeah. album. Exactly. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Claim it. Claim it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking yep. forward to that. Good. <laughs> so we are going to end this show with another song written by Kirsten, but this one she wrote with Miss Anita Cruz, and she's going to sing this to end the show with a bomb. Yeah, so tell definitely. Us, tell Live. us a little bit about how you two wrote this together. It was actually on uh, my first day working with Purple Song Supply, Aww. working with Miss Anita, and right. we, we kind of sat down just, oh, let's write a jingle, you know. Right. But we, you get two passionate singer-songwriters in the room together, and you come out with a song like this. Yeah, yeah so. it's, it's a three-minute jingle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. three-minute jingle. There you go. There you go. That sounds great. So coming up live, I See the Sun in You by Miss Kirsten Spear 
and Miss Anita Cruz. songs can fly we'll see you again next monday at 6 p.m eastern time 3 p.m pacific time on the voice america kids channel and remember for more information about the purple songs can fly project visit www.purplesongscanfly.org we'll be back with more music next week purple songs can fly.